Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, speeding? No, it's because your intro sucks. Um, Please step out onto the curbside. Hey everyone, welcome to another week of the Curbside Podcast, the podcast where we talk about cars and everything to do with cars. My name is Jeff, I drive a 2004 Honda S2000, and I have your Taiwanese American Southern Californian. What's up everybody, I'm, my name is Parth, I drive a 2016 M3 living up here in Bay Area, Northern California. Uh, yeah, only we drive one car. Oh, you said your car. I always forget that you like say your car already. Because I only I, have like, one car. I'm like you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, hey, I'm Andrew. I drive a 2014 Evo 10 MR and a 2015 BRZ. Here we yeah, go. there we go. Two weeks in the Bay in a row. Area. <laughs> Got all of it down. How's everyone doing during quarantine for the nth week? There's some light at the uh, tunnel, end of the tunnel. End of the tunnel. Because, yeah. I mean, they did extend it for Bay Area, at least for all, like, six counties. You know what's interesting? They always say, whenever they're talking about, like, the, the whole extension on shelter in place and stuff, yeah. they say, all six Bay Area counties and Berkeley. I'm like, why is Berkeley separate? Is it not part of a county? <laughs> it's too different. It's too <laughs> like, weird. Yeah, exactly. It's like, there's just a different part of the Bay Area. They just put them separate. <laughs> they're opening golf courses on May 4th, apparently, up here. So yeah, me and my dad are excited about that. That's cool. <laughs> They're opening up yeah. uh, hiking trails near my place. Yeah, I think they out. said like any business that can be conducted like outdoors mm. can like reopen now. Yeah. So right. allows for a lot of things to like start to you know, at least give something to do. You know, me and my dad are probably going to play golf every day now. So yeah. <laughs> and job sites for construction are opening up on Monday as well. Oh, oh that's good. Going back to work, yeah. Andrew? uh i don't know if i am i know the field crews are going to start getting out there and mobilizing their guys again mm -hmm. uh, but i don't know about us office people we'll see um pm said the end is near so the so, end that could mean yeah, two different like, things yeah a couple <laughs> different things but <laughs> yeah how have you guys been feeling this week tired i'm, I don't I'm know okay why. pretty lazy i think i'm getting a little too used to this whole thing been sleeping at like when the sun comes up and waking up when the sun is still up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've been like super tired this week, I think. Cause so I was, so our old psychology professor actually sent us a article about this whole isolation thing. Mm -hmm. And this person, uh, apparently according to some sort of researcher, they say we're entering like the third dreaded quarter of isolation. Why is so, the third one the dreaded one? So there, apparently there's three stages when you're locked up based on research. There's uh -huh. the first one where you're kind of scared, hence the panic buying and everything. The second part, which is like kind of like the novel phase. It's like, oh, cool. We're staying indoors. This is interesting. It's called the honeymoon phase. Yeah. And then there's a third part, which people start getting impatient. People start getting cabin fever and things start getting weird, essentially. People get itchy for a haircut and... Exactly. <laughs> Nail salons and shit and protesting. So that's that's why we're in this part of the whole situation where everyone's kind of going a bit crazy. Uh, hopefully, not too crazy because we don't need that right now. Because I'm definitely gonna have to go to a rehab after this, like Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Like there's some days that I'm like, it's five o'clock or not even five. I'm not gonna lie. It's like three o'clock, and I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> Alcohol sounds like a good idea. <laughs> and then just, you know, just drink till like eight o'clock and then you're already fucked up by nine and then <laughs> sleep. Yeah. <laughs> sleep and start all over. So uh -oh. anyway, cars. during this isolation time, yes, cars, uh, Drive Tribe has been putting out some sort of questions on their, um, I guess they do it all the time on their Instagram page. And one of them. I thought was kind of fun and I thought we should tackle it was if you could only drive cars that begin with the I modified it to be the first letter of your name because if we do the last name Andrew and I have the same cars uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the first letter of your first name 
what would you drive? Actually, good thing Easy. you did first name, because then if you did last name, I don't think I'd have any cars. That... <laughs> well, Saturn. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Saab. What is everyone driving then? Hmm. Hmm. Porsche. I have a huge list. So <laughs> Andrew has a huge list. I'll I have go a first. Good list too. All I'll right. go. For, I'll go first because there's only two. So Porsche. Give me a GD3 RS. Ooh. Easy. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I'll give you a Porsche Panamera to drive every day. Oh, double P. And then a Pagani, dude, for the weekends. No, <laughs> what's up, Pagani, dude? Yeah, dude. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> give me that Huayra. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could have also gone with Pontiac. Well, yeah. <laughs> you could have an Aztec for a daily. Yeah, there we go. Isn't that car, like, now the symbol for, like, Breaking Bad? I never watched the show, but that's what it people tell me. It became iconic because of Breaking Bad. Yeah. yeah, right? It did? Okay. Are yeah. they getting more expensive? Aztec? So. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to look that up right now just because that's... A- oh, Par, I think they got a Prius. <laughs> no, get the fuck. I'm out. <laughs> that's Toyota, though. <laughs> that's true. There's somebody selling an Aztec in Bedford, Virginia for $1,300. <laughs> so I don't think they're going That's up. That's like still I... more than I would pay for one. <laughs> Dude, they go as high as like $3,700. Wow. That's with 125,000 miles on it. Well, I yeah, found one in Scotts Valley near Santa Cruz for $1,000. And it's, I read the description. I was like, and then got to the end. I was like, damn, they really had me in the first half. It says, <laughs> Mechanic special. This 2004 Pontiac Aztec has a perfect body and paint job. Unfortunately, it's not running. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thousand bucks. Well, you spend a thousand bucks there. You take the engine out of the. See, wait, okay, that guy said perfect body and everything, right? You take yeah. the body, you buy this $3,500 one with low miles, mm. 125000 Take the engine out of that and put it into the perfect body one. I would like two J swap this thing. (laughs) Two J swap an Aztec, dude. What did it even fit? It has a BMW badge on it. (laughs) Is what? I'm gonna send this to you guys. It has a fucking BMW badge on it. So here it is. (laughs) I want to see the BMW badge. Yeah. So look at the beautiful paint. Beautiful engine bay. Yes. The interior is honestly pretty mint. That's not bad. And then we go. Wheels are clean. Those wheels are hideous. Boom. Oh, nice. Nice. Good. Right above the Pontiac badge. Yes. Yep. The top half is a BMW. The bottom half is a Pontiac. Yeah. I, didn't, I, I didn't know we're already at the Craig by Ride section. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Dude, I've never like really looked at a Pontiac Aztec head on. I didn't know. It looks like, I don't, what is that car? It's like a. Look where they put the turn signals. Yeah, the right. Juke? That's what I was about to say. It's like a Nissan Juke, but also like the, what is it? The Panda or something? Or Didn't this come before the Juke? Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, yeah, way good. before. Nissan took inspiration from I guess Pontiac. So. What card we like? Uh, the Pontiac Aztec. Aztec. That looks beautiful. Like, hello? <laughs> I was watching something, though, and they were, like, praising, like, every, even though, like, Aztec was literally voted, like, the ugliest car of the decade in, like, early 2000s. Mm. This car started the whole crossover trend. Yeah, you think it about it. Actually, it does have kind of a couple cool features. It has a tailgate with butt cutouts in it and cup holders, I think. And it's got the speaker controls in the trunk. Wow. So it's like the perfect tailgating machine. It just, shame, it looks like a piece of garbage. Yeah. Well, this thing birthed arguably like the second biggest market yeah. cars right now. I think it might have been just way ahead of its time. I think it's just, no, and it's not. I think Party design. No, <laughs> Party I got lucky with that one, man. <laughs> Anyways, oh my right. god, I can also there get a pin it. in Farina. The new electric car thing? No, 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 like pin in Farina, so I can drive Ferraris. No, no, that's a cheat, man. I can drive Ferraris designed by pin in Farina. Ferrari, but it's a Ferrari. It, uh, but it's designed no, by it's pin in Farina. No, right, no, no, exactly. But it has it a did. pin in Farina badge. No, but it's, it's a Ferrari. So do so do Coca Cola vending machines. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So see, I could drink out of those if I had to. You know, no, drive you those can get around. Get the Pinafore car. They have their own. Their own yeah. electric car thing looks sick. I guess yeah, you can make crazy. the argument that Mitsubishi also makes TVs or used to make TVs. That's like it, they make air conditioners, yeah, TVs, all that stuff. everything, dude. Yeah, they make everything. 
All right, Jeffrey, what's your list? I'm going to go last because my list is epic. <laughs> well, so... <laughs> Jays. Jeep. I could drive Jeeps and Jaguars. Uh-huh. That's a hell of an interesting combination. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Actually, Jeep's not that bad. They, they have that new one. I'll you take know, the, the, the Gladiator. That sick. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I, would, I like the Gladiator or the Wrangler. Those are pretty great. Or the Jeep. What was it? the track? The the track track hawk. Hawk. Track hawk. Yeah. yeah. Basically, uh, a Hellcat SUV. Yeah, exactly. Not you bad. like Jeeps, anyways. You want like a Discovery, so. Yeah, that, like, I do. I do want a Wrangler, uh, Jaguars XJ220. The new F type looks really good. The new we talked F-type. about it. Yes, yes. You, I can see you in that. A Jensen Interceptor. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's all I got. In terms of J. <laughs> Is that really it? Uh, what yeah, else starts with else. J? No, that's it, man. That's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. <laughs> well, that's all I have for my name. Well, let me start my list. Stop <laughs> there. First, I got Acura. Yeah. Ooh, yes. I'm NSX. Make, Jeffrey's yep, look, uh, I'm, jealous. I'm stealing Jeffrey's dream car. And got that. And then literally anything else in their lineup as a daily. And then, obviously, Alpha. I'll Hell yes. 4C. Yes. And then the Julia. Yes. Quadruple. Quad- quadrifolio man quadrifoglio aston martin i don't know much about aston to be honest but you can get one see but i can get one <laughs> yeah uh and then a couple oh audi although audis don't really pique my interest so much you know the thing that audi does that really pisses me off sorry to cut you off but now that we're talking about Audis. interiors no 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 no, no 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 if you look if you go to if you go to an audi dealer today and you look at any of their s line or rs line cars most of the rs all of the S for sure. You look at it, they're like, oh, dude, that looks so nice. And it has big wheels on it, like 20-inch, 21-inch wheels, right? And you look at the front, it's like, oh, look at those six-piston rotors. And they put fucking one pots in the rear. Or, <laughs> or what I've seen them do, six-piston carbon ceramic in the front, one pot steels in the back. <laughs> I mean, like, you what? Probably, yeah, <laughs> that's all, all you need, the front brakes. Dude, but come on, dude. That, that's such a, like, that's such bullshit. Remember cars used to have the, the, the disc brakes in the front and then drums in the back? Yeah, yeah but that was like a limitation Same of take concept. time. <laughs> no, dude, this is like, I mean, you have an Audi with like such nice like brakes in the front and they put literally the shittiest thing in the back. Mercedes, BMW, you know, your rivals, they aren't doing that shit. At the minimum, they'll give you two or four in the rear. I think Audi yeah. should just make the RS lines. That's I think so cars too. Should make Audi yeah. RS lines and the R8. That's it. So everything Dude. else is just like they stuck the same car in a photocopier and just enlarged it. Yeah, yeah. stretch. Actually, <laughs> the 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 Audi that does appeal to me is the RS6 Avant. Do that. And then I have a couple honorable mentions that most people wouldn't think about having an aerial Adam. Ooh, that's for track sick. monster. Parse doesn't like would that be car. Epic. Well, Parse sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I don't like it. I just don't want one. <laughs> There's a oh, difference. Right. I agree with you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I bet if you sat in one. Mm. No, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then Alpina. Yes, Ooh, that Alpina. I like. Yeah. That I like. That I like and that I want. Does that count as yeah, a separate brand? I no, so. it's eh. Alpina. Alp- yes. Alpina has badged cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It is a separate brand. He gets all the cool cars. Yeah, you guys have boring ass lists. Hey, Parth has Pagani. Hey, that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyways, with that being said, shall we uh, move on to our break? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, welcome to our break. <laughs> break. Where- we are taking a break from stuff. Because yeah. we're so tired. Yeah. Difficult yeah. life, this podcasting yeah. thing. Yeah, we have to sit here and talk about stuff we like. Yeah. Too 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 hard, man. Anyway, um yeah. Check us out at the, the curbsidepodcast.com. Uh where you can find links to our things, where you could listen to our podcast. If watch our videos. Yeah, watch our videos on our YouTube channel. Where uh, it's look up the curbside podcast uh on YouTube. I literally bled for these videos. He yeah, did. yeah. He, he did. actually did. Yeah. So go check yeah. them out and enjoy Andrew's pain. <laughs> yeah. 
And then if you feel sorry for Andrew's pain, you can hit us up with a sponsorship by emailing us at the curbside at the curbside podcast at gmail.com. Uh, yes. If you feel sorry for Andrew, which you should. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, you can also find us on social media where we post um, just our links to all of our YouTube videos, snippets of what you can expect from those videos. Uh, also pictures of other cars, car news, all that stuff. So our Instagram is at the curbside podcast. Um, Twitter is at, at curbside pod and everywhere else. Just fucking Google us. Yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> This episode is also sponsored by Raid Shadow. I'm just kidding. You got me hell excited for a second, dude. I thought we actually got a sponsor. You were surprising us on the show. I was going to be like, what the fuck? Anyway, let's go back to our show. Now that we got you loose, Are we back to the show right now? Say, say it again. <laughs> Oh, God. A Craig My Ride. Welcome to... That thing scares the shit out of me every time. (laughs) I know, it does scare me too. (laughs) Welcome to Craig My Ride, the part of the show that we go over cars that have been well modified for the Craigslist and Facebook marketplace. And likewise. Uh, Usually I like to send cars that are terrible, absolutely horrible. But this week's a little different. Uh, I hate it still, but I I must appreciate the craftsmanship on this. So let me guys, uh, let me share this with you on screen. Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> Check it out. I was looking at the car and I'm like, what is that? Then I saw the description. I'm like, oh. I saw the price. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, real quick. Jeffrey had one of these or his family had one of these. Yeah, this was the first car. This the nine. This nineteen ninety whatever Honda Accord wagon was the first car my dad ever bought when he came to the states. I'm gonna say and this: this is not the worst it. thing we've seen. No, no I'll, I'll tell not. you what. It, it's it's very like if you look at it closely. I hate it, but it's very very well done. It's, it's not so, so bad. Well done. It, it's like, look, look at the craftsmanship on this. Like, there's supposed to be a license plate kind of square here. Uh-huh. It's gone. Yeah. Dude, they, like, if I feel like if I lived in South Central LA, I would drive this. I'm down. <laughs> not even. You could put this in a car show and not everyone will be mad at it. Yeah. This yeah is I'm very, not mad at it, actually. Like, oh, the interior's got yeah, go, though. The interior's not fun, but it's very well done. Look at this instrument cluster, right? I'm more I mad see, at the interior I, than the exterior. And I can see why he's charging 29000 Maybe his choice of color? Maybe yeah, question. I love this. I love this gear slot. <laughs> like, his choice of color may be questionable. Like Maybe the guy doesn't have good taste in color, but his craftsmanship work is pretty no, good. He's. I think he's going for a certain style, right? It's that yeah, old definitely. American wood panel Beach Boys. wagon. <laughs> yeah, but... It's just on a hot cord wagon, which yeah. I mean, but I don't look at that. The but, the paint wraps into the door. Yeah, like, it's like thorough. look at the door handles; they're changed. The, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing: um, the Accord never came Whoa. with a bench seat in the back. Yeah, I mean, captain's chairs in the back is a bench seat. It never came in leather. The door uh, cards are totally redone. Yeah, yeah look the at the window cards. buttons, dude. Yeah, and look at this engine. Look at that. Dude. Does it have a regular engine? What does it have? Uh, that's a good question because it, it, it just Four in. Cylinder. Let's see. Pow, let's go down to powertrain. Uh, inline four. four. Yeah, inline four. So it looks about the same, but just done up right. But check out the, the trunk. Look at that. Hell yeah. That I'm that. not mad at. Yeah, look at that. We got to do an archive of Pimp My Ride because this may have been on the show. <laughs> <laughs> maybe dude but look look at the under carriage look at that it's so clean it's See, so clean on craig my ride we don't always just talk shit everyone. exactly exactly that's why lowering I springs me. yeah look at this thing dude, everything is so clean it's definitely not my style hence i don't know but it's i could really appreciate this sort of craftsmanship on this if he car. did it in all white i wouldn't mind having it so if you guys are interested in this 29997 uh used 1996 accord wagon is on sale uh, at duncan imports and classics 
Yeah. Uh, and George. like usually, you know, like that wire grill, usually those look like shit, but that's yeah. like the yeah, cleanest that's fresh. I've ever seen. I think this oh, car just belongs like 20 years ago, though. Mm -hmm. Someone might have bought this 20 years ago, honestly. I miss the cord wagon, though. That would have been cool. Yeah. They yeah, would have been cool. Kind of rare. Yeah, they are. I can't find a single <laughs> one for sale besides this one. Well, buy it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And then you don't like the color, get a wrap. <laughs> no, because I, I initially saw this, right? I was like, oh, man, I, I get this. And they just, like, bring it back to factory spec and whatnot. But then I saw it, and I saw everything that went into it. I was like, oh, it feels wrong. So, it's just 390 views in the past seven days. That's insane. It's going to sell so fast, even during COVID times. <laughs> I love the description, okay? There's dealer notes somewhere down here. It just says, the wicked wagon. I like it. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, so that is uh, Craig My Ride for this week. Check That's fantastic. Out. Not mad. Nope. A little bit the mad, not horribly mad. I don't like the style, but I could appreciate it. <laughs> so, time for the news. Dealers, when they're selling cars and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. There's a certain fee, because they don't own the cars they sell. They, and I they, they do. I don't think so, because they, they have to, I think the bank owns it. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like, they take out a loan to buy it, probably. Yeah, which is why yeah. they always say, right, that, like, the end of the month or the beginning of the month is the best time to buy a car. Mm -hmm. because they're more you know yeah because uh, they have to pay inclined to sell it otherwise they'll have to pay another month of whatever yeah otherwise yeah. they're just paying for more because then they'll keep getting cars yeah i wonder how the dealerships are doing these days with that because mm -hmm. no, like barely any cars are moving probably not well that's why <laughs> it's a well. buyer's market yeah it is. <laughs> walk into it a is dealership exactly. cars listed for 50 off from 25 you might take it <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> the end of this year they'll be giving cars away because remember that corvette i was just showing you guys earlier the one that i checked out with my dad because he's looking yeah. for a daily yeah so guy has a list for 53 7 right mm -hmm. and it's a manual so you know very few people in already are going to look at that because manual yeah it's been exactly on the dealer's lot for 30 days now, mm -hmm. today. Hasn't sold it. His price hasn't decreased. And it was a trade-in because the guy traded it in for like a ZO, ZR1 allocation that he got. So they're listing 53.7. They probably paid maybe 45 at most. Maybe. So my dad's like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll just go put a go and give him a ridiculous offer of like 40k. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, right? That's what I I I kind of want him to just give the offer just to just see what happens. <laughs> During these times, will 13k below asking work? <laughs> Hi, can I get this GTR for 25k? Yes, please take it. <laughs> 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 uh, but going into that, I have some news from mm. uh, uh, the other side of the world, India, mm. where my people are from. India has sold exactly zero cars in April. Holy crap. <laughs> That's a country of almost, what, two, three billion people? Like a, yeah, like a third of the world. Yeah. <laughs> zero, zero cars. They have sold zero cars in the month of April. Huh. Like, you know, it's when it, things are bad, they never hit zero. Yeah. But they've hit zero. They, they hit zero. <laughs> zero cars. And, like, India is not, like, you know, it's not, I mean, it is not the best place, but it's also, there's a good amount of people with money, and they buy cars there now, and yeah. they have a good amount of brands. Mahindra, Mahindra, Maru, Maru, bleh, Maruti, Suzuki, <laughs> Hyundai, MG, Toyota. These are the main cars that are sold there. Uh -huh. Zero. Zero. Commercial vehicles, private vehicles, whatever, it's zero. That's because... India has been on this like massive lockdown yeah. since like March and it's supposed to be extended till May 17th. Yeah. And they're losing as it said an approximate 300 some million dollars a day the automotive oh industry. Jeez. And that's dollars, American dollars. That's their so, that's in their own like Indian market cuz how big is the automotive market in India? It's pretty big. It said in April 2019, the industry sold 247,000 passenger vehicles, 68, se almost 70,000 commercial vehicles, and 1.6 million two and three wheeled vehicles. And down oh to zero? zero? Yeah. My In the gosh. month of April. Well, at least they're taking quarantine seriously over there. Yeah. Like, uh, our little country over here <laughs> yeah yeah i mean uh, they also have like things where the police officers will like beat you with a stick if you <laughs> oh yeah sure <laughs> but like that's insane 
Zero. Yeah, yeah zero. That's, that's crazy. In India, you can definitely walk into the showroom and ask them for half off the MSRP <laughs> and they'll give it to you. That's for sure. I want this car for a dollar. It's more than we're making. Yep, we'll take it. <laughs> I have some news on the opposite end of that spectrum. Uh-huh. Um, uh, so IBM did a recent survey about um, what the automotive market might be like and just transportation in general after this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they surveyed 14,000 people and they found that most of them plan to use personal transportation more rather than using public transit, ride sharing, Uber, Lyft, all that stuff. So that makes sense. That makes sense, actually. Yeah. So I think you can, the automotive market might blow up after yeah. this <laughs> but then like the ride share public transportation market might just die in california yeah. it'll die yeah traffic's yeah. gonna be fun yeah yeah because it makes sense i mean it, we're definitely gonna go into an age where kind of everyone's a germaphobe for a while yeah that's true because like social distancing yeah. still because like, if you if you can you'd rather take your own car than have to go on a bus with like 50 other people crammed up yeah, yeah exactly I, I mean, in, in an airplane like if you go across the country there's no choice Unless you can afford your own private jet. Huh, that's true. Wow. Because, well, I mean, it's definitely going to change us culturally after yeah. all of this. Because, I mean, you when you look back to Asia uh, after the first SARS epidemic outbreak, a lot of the, of the public started wearing masks. And I think a lot of us here in this country kind of like looked at that, thought it was weird. Some people yeah, we did. Look at us we now. did. But... I think that's going to change drastically <laughs> after yeah. after all of this. You know who's not having fun with this lockdown though? Who? Our boy Elon Musk. Oh, I was say, is it a rich person? Yeah, uh huh. Uh-huh. So he's. Been Isn't on... it easier for a rich person to have fun in lockdown though? Because they got like nice houses and shit. Yeah, but I think the problem is Tesla is not considered an essential business, so someone's a bit mad. Oh, so Elon Musk is throwing a pissy fit. Yes, uh, okay. he, he, he's been saying that uh, the lockdowns are fascist. Mm-hmm. Um, and, <laughs> he and, he's been... <laughs> 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 and he's been recently going on Twitter saying, Free America! Free America? Yes, yes. And, and this... then he's been also kind of promoting articles of misinformation to, to continue pushing his oh. point around here. So, also, in other news, in other Tesla news, apparently by the end of this year or next year or something, self full self driving capability will be available as a subscription service. Sub- subscription <laughs> service. <laughs> what does that mean? You pay some amount of dollars a month, maybe, and then your car will gain self driving capabilities. Imagine you forget to make the payment and then you're driving along on autopilot. <laughs> And then it just, boom, clicks off. You forgot to make your payment. Payment <laughs> overdue. Features unavailable. Crash into a freaking barrier. Based on how Tesla does things and how they release programs before they should, you know, be released to the public, yeah. and that Elon Musk doesn't want this lockdown, uh, I've concluded that uh, him and his company do not care a single crap about you. You know what's hilarious? Mm. Uh, Tesla stock dropped a shit ton because what of all the shit that he said. Yeah. What's funny is it was supposed to go up because just like a day or two before that, Tesla had beat the projected earnings per share. <laughs> so everyone's like, oh, dude, Tesla's going to skyrocket because they beat it by a good amount, too. I think it was like 20% or some shit. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, yeah. shit, Tesla's going to go up. Then Elon Musk goes off a fucking Twitter he handle. Sabotaged himself. Yeah. He like, does why does he do that to himself, <laughs> dude? Man, I used to like Elon Musk a lot based on the things he made. And then I like Elon Musk been... when he has nothing to do with Tesla. <laughs> he's, been, he's, he's been very vocal the last yeah. year or two. Yeah, these couple past few years, something's gotten to his head, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Just... <laughs> Calm down. You do a lot better. <laughs> he, was it, didn't he like talk shit about our boy Bill Gates at one point? Yes, because he wanted a take on. Oh, yeah, the take on. Yeah. Or actually... A- according to how you should say it, according to James May and Matthew Farah from Smoking Tire, it's the ta- Tycon. Tycon. Take it. No, it's a Tycon. I'm American. That's, it's Taycan. Taycan. <laughs> take I'm going to go drive my Taken. Taking my Taken. <laughs> God damn. 
So as Jeffrey like mentioned, I don't know how many times during our quarantine episodes now, a um, yeah. bunch of shows have been canceled. Um, Constant news. Yeah, Pebble Beach canceled. Yeah, so obviously, uh, what is it? Geneva was canceled. But there are virtual car shows that we can attend for the 2020 season. Yay. <laughs> I'll take it, man. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, the, this first one I'm seeing on this list, the Peterson Museum's Global Cars and Coffee. I don't know. Jeffrey, we've been to Peterson. Yes. I love Peterson. Peterson's fantastic. Yeah. I'm actually sad that we didn't go down into the vault, though, when we were there. Yeah. <laughs> but you know. Their Ferrari room is fantastic. I, I just couldn't leave that spot. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally every room in there is crazy. Yeah. Um, so they're doing their second. They've done one already. Uh, they aired their first Global Cars and Coffee on April 26th of this year. Mm. Um, and they featured 140 vehicles from France, Germany, Australia, England, Canada, uh, the UAE, South America, and all over the United States. And I mean, knowing Peterson, it was probably like some top notch, like crazy probably. stuff. It's probably so all how, their ca- own, own cars too. How do they? How do they incorporate the 16 year olds with the cameras and the the gimbals running behind cars? You see, that's my question. <laughs> like, yeah. how do we go rev it, rev it, <laughs> and then like you see all the 16 year olds sitting at the middle of the intersection when all these guys are ripping it out. And yeah. then you have the occasional Mustang doing a power slide and going into the median. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. How, how like do they incorporate into the crowd? That? How do they incorporate that? You just have a Mustang drift into a camera. It's like, ah, oh, I'm there. <laughs> Perfect. And and then the live stream ends. <laughs> and then it's all over Facebook, like, oh, look at this guy drift into a crowd. It's a like another camera of the Mustang drifting into a camera. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's what I'm wondering because also part of like car shows is you go around and kind of like check people's cars out and talk to them. Yeah, part mm-hmm. of the car show is like the car show that happens in the parking lot is not yeah. actually the car show. Yeah, how yeah. does I'm curious to how that works. Well, we can watch the first one. It's still on YouTube. Oh, okay. um, I don't know the format, but it would be cool if they like had cars and the owner and like the owner would actually walk through it's not just like oh here's this car here's this car here's this car yeah. i don't yeah. think it's like that it would kind of be pointless if they just yeah. did that uh well virtual hangouts to add to andrew's virtual uh car shows they have a a zoom event sponsored by mercedes-benz and hosted by mercedes-benz it's actually happening right now mm-hmm. so there i mean probably you can find the video on youtube later but Mercedes-Benz is hosting a virtual car show called Concourse de Zoom. And uh, there will be celebrities there who are going to show off their own personal Mercedes-Benz. And joining will be Jay Leno, who is Jay Leno, Ricky Mm. Fowler, a golfer, Martha Stewart, who was in prison, (laughs) Madeline (laughs) Pesh, who I don't know who that is, Ludacris, who's a rapper, Hannah Elliott, who I also don't know who that is, Cole Walliser, I don't know who that is, and others. Um, I, was, I thought you were going to say Lewis Hamilton. That would have been sick. Why didn't they? Yeah. Why didn't they He's put Lewis racing. Hamilton? What the hell is he doing? Yeah. What's he doing that he can't join a Zoom <laughs> call? He lives in LA all the time anyway. Um, Did you say Martha Stewart's in prison? I mean, that's what she's known for, right? Is she still in prison? No, no. I said she was in prison. Okay. Yeah, she <laughs> was in prison. She's like yeah. doing cooking shows and shit. Is yeah. that what she does? Yeah. Okay. I just know she does she like cooking shows like Snoop Dogg. The cars. The cars are going to be there. I'm guessing all the nice ones will belong to Jay Leno. <laughs> yeah. uh, there'll be a 1908 chain-driven Mercedes, a 1956 okay. 300 SL Gullwing. That's Ooh, definitely Jay's. That's probably Jay's. A 1988 560 SL, a uh, 91 G300D, and there'll be some newer Mercedes models too. An A220. Like what? That's definitely like Martha Stewart's. And then, she drives uh, an Aston Martin. I just looked that up. Oh, really? She's a DB9. Mercedes has, if you if you like on YouTube, I get these ads because I watch YouTube on my phone, so I don't even have an ad blocker. They have like this four minute segment of this lady who owns a Mercedes A class, hmm. and it's like a three minute video talking about her daily life with her Mercedes. Which that's how they attract like the everyday buyer. It's just yeah. and apparently Mercedes has this like hey Siri function now, which is like hey Mercedes or something like that. You, no. you talk to your car. So. Hopefully your daughter's not named Mercedes. 
<laughs> hey, Mercedes. Yeah. No, not you, the car. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they're doing this Zoom de Concourse or Concourse de Zoom. The I participants. Will not be watching that. <laughs> no, <laughs> the, the, the participants will make a joint donation to the American Red Cross. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's so there cool. is some good coming out of this. Guys, I have another piece of news. Ah. We have a new Ken Blockmobile coming. Ooh, I, I saw like that. all of his builds. I like all of his builds. Right, it's oh, sick. Well, we've had the what was it? The Hunacorn, the Huna truck. Coming up is going to be the Huna Fox. It looks sick, dude. Like, look oh, at that. Cool. <laughs> Shush. All the vents. Oh. I, I I want one just to have one to look at. I'll and even I, take it without the engine, like the Aztec. And I think they were thinking, like, they're trying to decide what li- livery, livery they wanted on it. Livery, livery, yeah. But look at the white one. No, I still like the black one. The black one's good. The black, I like the black one, but, I mean, look at this thing. Yeah. Ooh. The louvers. That's how I want a Fox body. Right? Ooh. And knowing him, it's going to look exactly like that, which is Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is he on? Like Jim Connor fucking 20? Uh, 11. No, actually, see, the problem is he had Jim Connors and then he started doing climb Connors where he did it at mm. Pikes Peak and uh, then that yeah, one in yeah. China. Depends what he wants to do. He's probably going to do another climb Connor. But yeah, look at that. Oh, thing, no. Dude. That thing looks like it's ready to freaking rip. But it does <laughs> kind of look like a hill climb car. Nurburgring. News from the ring. Actually, not news from the ring, but. Uh, because of Corona, they had shut down the ring. Because you know how the ring, like you can pay like five bucks and anybody can take go on it, even if you have yeah. like like just a beater shit car. <laughs> yeah. Not even a shit car. If you have like a regular like you know average Joe's Honda Accord, and, like I want to experience the ring. You can go on the ring, but they stop. Go. Yeah, you can just go. Like Nurburgring Ring has like these open days. Oh, like if you show up on an open guy. day, yeah, exactly. And it's like, <laughs> like it was not a, like I remember I searched it up once, and I think it was like. 25 30 bucks like american dollars that's awesome i think they tell you like a few basic rules like if there's a faster car coming let them pass on your left and move over to the right make yeah, sure you're they know back. that already they it, they're, they're germans they're yeah they know that <laughs> exactly so they're not doing that right now because of obviously covid19 stuff mm-hmm. which means mm-hmm. the track is closed and which means manufacturers are using this time to test the shit out of their prototypes and <laughs> pre-production cars just test um, everything Literally everything. Here's a list of some of the cars that were spotted in the past week or two weeks of what's being tested, and it's an indication of what's coming. Yeah. The new 992 GT3, uh, they're saying it's going to have a fully naturally aspirated engine again. They're not going to go with the turbos like they did in the Carreras and the 4 Carrera 4Ss. Yeah. Cayman. 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 Cayman GT4 RS. First time ever. Wow. Nice. So there's going to be a, yeah, it's finally going to be a Cayman GT4 RS, uh, BMW M3, big fat grills we saw. Uh, from the sounds of it, it sounds like the same engine as the S55, maybe just a little bit more tuned or something. Mm. Golf 8R, I don't know what the fuck that is. That's coming. AMG GTR Black Series. Oh, so the I haven't AMG had a Black Series in a while, huh? Right? Yeah. So the AMG so. GTR is already like a monster. A pay- oh, and there's some news that allegedly either they have done it or they're about to do it. They're about to send the GTR Black Series around the ring to set a production car record. Holy shit. It's supposed yeah. to be that fast. All that doesn't sound like a Black cars Series. Are just, yeah. All their, I was, was going to say, I don't know. You're probably going to say the same thing. All the Black Series cars are just burnout machines. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too much power. <laughs> but see, yeah. that, that started to change with the last one. Remember the SLS Black? I thought that, that was, was still that a was more machine. No, no, but it was still more capable than the regular SLS. Because uh, yeah, people said that, and they, that one actually set pretty decent lap times because... AMG decided that all of a sudden we're not going to be drift machine cars. Um, so apparently they want to, or they have done and is not confirmed yet. The GTR black series as a production record on the ring. Yeah. So that might be a new leader soon. Um, new Audi RS three. Uh, they also, this is what I love about the Germans. They send the Mer- new Mercedes S class around the ring. <laughs> <laughs> They still kind of have to. <laughs> <laughs> but because of all the people that are like standing around the ring looking at all these cars and like making these videos and posting this stuff, yeah, they said every time it passed, it never had a noise. Either the engine's really quiet mm. or they're saying it could possibly have a hybrid system. Face lift M5 coming. So that's just probably going to be a new front bumper, a new rear bumper, and like 
five extra horsepower for an extra 10k yeah and a bunch of infinities and hyundai's that nobody cares about nice good yeah yeah we could skip over those (laughs) yeah so interesting cars from this that i want to see soon is that amg gtr black series Uh, and that came in gt4 rs that's that sounds cool the last gt4 came in was apparently really really good yeah the Caymans are Porsche's best car, I think. And Porsche just, just cannot make it better than yeah. the 911. Yeah, because then, then it would render the 911 pointless. It's literally like having a son that's smarter than the first son and telling the second son that, no, you can't go to school. <laughs> <laughs> because you'll become too smart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's some good stuff coming. So once this lifts, there's going to be a lot of new cars, I'm guessing, on the market. Oh, yeah. Speaking of good stuff coming, uh, let's. I'm going to close out this week like we closed out last week with possible rumors of the Corvette C8. This is becoming one of the most fun platforms out there right now. There has been a new leak from insider sources again. I'm reading this article on The Drive. Apparently, there's going to be a down, someone down the line. Of course, there's going to be the, what, the Z06. Yeah, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But there's also going to be a 1,000 horsepower Zora Halo and an what? E-Ray hybrid. I'm not surprised <laughs> about the hybrid thing. Yeah, I'm not surprised about the hybrid, but 1,000 horsepower? So is Corvette... And it's a production, no. quote-unquote, production model. Yeah. Are they, are they coming after, like, freaking Koenigsegg and, like, LaFerraris and P1s Absolutely. and shit now? Absolutely. They have yeah. a platform to know. Because that, that, I mean, 1,000 horsepower hybrid sounds like pretty much LaFerrari P1918 territory. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's a Corvette. It won't cost more than $150,000. And I can see that being like the max number. Mm-hmm. Imagine $150,000 for a 1,000 horsepower car. That is the <laughs> budget. That is the best deal to ever come out of like anything. This, this, this new platform they have is... This is ridiculous. <laughs> I think they're gonna stir some. They're gonna stir some shit up. Yeah. If I was, if I was Ferrari, Porsche, and McLaren, I'd start pooping my pants a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'd be terrified. You know what I don't understand with this company though? Freaking mm. GM. Yeah. They did a phenomenal job with this car. Yes. It took time, and there's some things in the car that you're like, okay, these guys took time to think about it, and they did it right. And yeah, there's some shit in there that makes it like, okay, that's kind of cheap, but it f- starts at fifty nine thousand dollars for a mid-engine V8 supercar, pretty much. Who was in charge of designing their fucking wheels? <laughs> Who? The C8 Corvette has the worst wheel choice ever. It has ever. the worst wheels for what car it is. Like, yeah. I feel like that this people, you know how to say, either you hate it or you love it. Yeah. I feel like there's people in the hated department that would love it if they just had better damn wheels. Yeah, this is, be- like, that's my problem with the looks. That's the only problem I that's have with the, the looks. only pro- If I ever bought one for some reason, I would. the first thing I would do is get some, like, HRE wheels and put, some, put that shit on there, dude. Maybe that's what they thought. Probably. Because those wheels look like they could go on, like, a Chevy Bolt. Bolt, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they literally could have just gone to their last generation C7 Z06 or Grand Sport and put those wheels on it. Yeah, it, it, it's the way it's selling right now, it looks like some guy with a very nice suit and he's like wearing flip flippers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like, and the thing that annoys me is this is from GM. Yeah. Everything in GM is done with a committee, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. This went through a line of people before it got approved. Even the wheels, everything goes through a certain chain of command until it gets approved. Right. Yeah. But this, this was seen by 30, 40, 50, a hundred people. Before the last guy put his approval check mark on it, nobody thought that hey, maybe this is not. This is, we should use some other wheels. Maybe that's what keeps the cost down. No, <laughs> we, the say, wheels. It's a it's a, it's a sub sixty thousand dollar car. Yeah, people are going to modify the shit out of it. People are going to put wheel, like aftermarket wheels on it. Like I'm not comparing. I'm not saying these are the same cars. FRS BRZ came with the nastiest fucking wheels of all oh, time. Disgusting. I saw a stock FRS the other day, and I was like, this guy has stock wheels on it. Like why? Exactly. See, <laughs> it like, doesn't everyone make sense. Them out anyways. <laughs> I think That's it's true. a cost thing. Yeah. So with that being said, thanks for listening to another episode, guys. Uh, again, you can find us at the curbsidepodcast.com where there's a link to all uh, to our Libsyn page with all our links to the other pages like Apple Podcast, uh, Google Podcast, Podcast, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Spotify. Yeah. Yeah.
You can also find us on social media at the Curbside Podcast. Boom, there it is. Go follow us. Look how uh-huh. easy that was. You see how fast he found it? Now go find yeah. it. Jesus Christ, you guys are lazy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. No, 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 people. Yeah, you, you are a great audience. Freaking yes. Park just insults the audience every week. Hey, man, I keep it real. Keep it 400. <laughs> yeah. Don't listen to Park. Park sucks. <laughs> um, you can find us on Twitter at Curbside Pod and Facebook. And uh, thank you to Kid Dope for the intro and outro to our show, Fast Cars and Wild Hearts. And as always, guys, my name is Jeff. I'm Parth. And I'm Andrew. Remember to drive safe, and life is too short to drive boring cars. Stay safe. Bye. Oh, check out our YouTube channel. Bye. Oh, yeah. That was-